Welcome to Enzyme Kinetics, a series of short videos about enzyme kinetics. Enzymes have two measurable important events. They bind to the substrate and they catalyze a reaction. In this section of our video series on enzyme kinetics, we will discuss protein ligand binding. To get the most out of the videos, I recommend that you watch them in order. This is a reminder that this presentation is Dr. Johnson's intellectual property. Protein ligand binding is an equilibrium phenomenon. We can measure the equilibrium position either as an association constant or as a dissociation constant. Association constants are used by chemists, while biochemists typically use dissociation constants. The units for dissociation of the protein ligand complex are in moles per liter. We can measure the Ka or Kd experimentally by determining the dependence of binding on ligand concentration. In this table, you can see that there are a wide range of Kd values for protein ligand interactions. Kd values greater than 10 to the minus 3 millimolar show very weak binding. Kd values less than 10 to the minus 14 are very strong, almost irreversible binding. Usually we need to define Kd and N, where N is the number of binding sites for the ligand on the protein. In order to do this, we need to define the fraction of bound protein, the PL complex, as theta. We can rearrange the Kd expression to solve for PL and substitute this into the theta expression. We simplify this expression by dividing by P and multiplying by Kd. The resulting expression for theta, also known as the Langmuir isotherm, is good for one binding site. So what happens if there are more than one independent binding sites? We can accommodate this with N in the expression. There is an assumption here that these independent binding sites have the same affinity for the ligand. There are some graphical methods for determining Kd and N. If we plot theta directly as a function of ligand concentration, we get a hyperbolic curve. Kd is the ligand concentration at half saturation. We need a curve fitting program to use this type of curve. Another method is to use a titration type of plot where theta is plotted as a function of log L. Log Kd occurs at the inflection point. This type of plot is commonly used in pharmaceutical and receptor ligand studies and is the best way to see if saturation is reached. A double reciprocal plot arises from a rearrangement of the theta expression we saw at the bottom of the last slide. This plot, because it gives a nice straight line, is better than the other two plots at allowing us to determine the Kd and N values without a curve fitting program. The x-intercept is minus one over Kd and the y-intercept is one over N. The scattered plot is very commonly used and is less error prone than the double reciprocal plot. The y-intercept is N over Kd and the x-intercept is N. A straight line on the scattered plot shows that the binding sites are independent of each other. If you're having trouble remembering what the values we're getting from the intercepts are, this is how I remember. I look to see what is plotted on that axis and use the relationship between what is plotted and the constants. Kd relates to ligand concentration and n to theta. So on the double reciprocal plot, we have plotted 1 over L on the x-axis and the constant we are getting is minus 1 over Kd. We need to make this negative because the intersection point is negative. On the y-axis, we plotted 1 over theta. So the value we get at the intercept is one over N. There are a number of different reasons for curvilinear scattered plots. The two most common are as follows. There could be two or more independent binding sites with different affinities. In this case, the line tends to curve towards the origin. There are methods for determining Kd and N for each of the binding sites using the scattered plot, but these are fraught with errors and mostly should not be attempted by hand. <clears throat> Another possibility is that there is cooperativity between the ligand binding sites arising from conformational changes in the protein upon binding of ligand. 
The usual case is that there is positive cooperativity causing more favorable binding of the second ligand than the first. It is rare to find negative cooperativity in which binding of the second ligand is more difficult than the first. Next time, we'll review one of the foundations of enzyme kinetics, chemical kinetics.